International news now. World leaders are congratulating Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's return to power. He's won a landslide victory in the country's marathon general elections. It gives him another five-year term and a mandate to pursue his Hindu policies. Or his BJ parties, the first to win a back-to-back -back majority in more than 30 years. The European Union parliamentary elections kicked off today in the Netherlands and the UK. Britain was due to leave the bloc in March, but that deadline has since been extended. The other 26 EU member nations will vote over the next three days, with results expected late on Sunday. They're voting for 571 MEPs. Botswana has lifted a 2014 ban on hunting elephants. The government says their numbers have increased and it's causing problems for small farmers. The country has more free-roaming elephants than anywhere else in Africa, which draws many foreign tourists. In Mozambique, one of the world's poorest countries, relies on aid to survive, but this didn't stop Manuel Chang from allegedly taking $17 million in kickbacks. The scam plunged the country into the worst financial crisis in its history, and while it still struggles to survive, the former finance minister will be extradited home to face corruption charges. Is sending him home the best decision in the interest of justice, and just how does our law differ from international law. Joining me from our Pretoria studio is UNISA international law professor Andre Thomas-Hausen. Very good to have you with us. Professor, why did we send him home? Well, it's a political decision. It's actually not mandated by our South African Extradition Act or the law. Um, it's the interpretation that the Minister of Justice gave um, to, um, to the SADC extradition protocol and um, the extradition treaty that we have with the United States of America. Uh, so um, uh, what he did is, um, is what he wished to do uh, for whatever reason. Okay, and the U.S. is, from their point of view, understandably angry about this. They believe that he scammed millions of people there or hundreds of thousands of people there of millions of dollars. So where does this leave them now from a legal point of view? It's not just millions of dollars, it's two billion, two billion euros that on the instructions of Minister Chang weren't, as a loan, weren't paid to the National Bank of Mozambique, but they were paid into the private account of a mediator or a broker who happens to live in Abu Dhabi. And this is where the money disappeared. Mm. So the scandal is, in, in, in the words of, of some very senior people, the worst corruption scandal that we've ever seen in Africa. Uh, what, uh, where does that leave the United States? Well, they have already indicated yesterday by their spokesman uh, here or spokesperson here at the embassy that they are examining their review uh, possibilities and they will probably take this de decision on review according to the South African PAJA Act. Any administrative or executive decision can be taken on judicial review and that is what probably will happen. Where do you think is likely to serve justice if at all, would he have had more chance of that in the United States if they had got their way, other than having this review? The, the Mozambican system of justice doesn't have a good reputation, and, um, and there is basically agreement worldwide uh, that it is not independent and it doesn't function particularly well. And the, the investigation into the activities of Mr. Chang, interestingly, only commenced four weeks after the U.S. extradition request uh, was implemented in South Africa at the end of 2018, just uh, before the year end. That's when Mr. Chang was uh, detained here on the extradition request. The interesting thing is really that the, uh, the treaty that we have with America from 1999 uh, provides specifically that the nationality of the victims must be taken into consideration uh, in the cases where there's more than one extradition request. Right. Um, and it doesn't provide that the nationality of the, uh, of the accused person should be taken into consideration. Uh, whilst the minister has relied, and he has uh, argued by, that way in his statement, he has relied on the nationality of Mr. Cheng. He said uh, he's Mozambican, so he should go home to Mozambique. Okay, what about uh, when Omar al-Bashir from Sudan was in South Africa and they refused to do what was expected from them from the International Criminal Court? It's, it's like a very sad repetition of the Bashir scandal. Mm. Um, South Africa aided and abetted 
um, that this man could escape justice, could escape extradition to the International Criminal Court. And as a result, uh, Sudanese for another five years had to endure one of the worst uh, abuses and, and, and uh, dictatorial regime in Sudan. And only now did the Sudanese people finally get rid of Bashir, and he's now arrested. Mm. Um, so here we have again a case of, um, of somebody who is actually guilty of, of very, very serious abuses and, and corruption. And he's a key person in this scheme to, to, to dwindle away 2 billion euros. Um, and again, he is let loose. He's, he's going home. Uh, and and uh, often, uh, excuse me, in... sorry, I mean, wh one of the arguments to, to sending people home is uh, local justice versus international justice that, and as you're saying, definitely not in Mozambique. But is there, um, is there traction in that thought that local justice is better served by bringing somebody home? Well, obviously, um, in, in, within the ANC, there is also a big sympathy for the Frelimo party. They are sister parties from the liberation struggles. And, and they felt that um, this was the better thing to do. Um, Foreign Durko Minister Sisulu said so in February that, um, that Mr. Cheng would eventually be sent home to Mozambique because that was the, the easiest thing to do for all concerned. That may be so, but justice definitely would not be served. But he is not yet in Mozambique, and it may very well be that he is not going to Mozambique because um, I, I do have faith in our legal system. Um, the courts are quite able to, to examine these things. They have done so in the Bashir case. Except in the Bashir case, the decision of the South African judiciary was frustrated because once the court would have been able to take a decision, Bashir was away. He had gone. So whatever judgment the court would have made, it would have uh, been without effect. And this is exactly what we hope will not happen in the Cheng case, yeah. that Cheng doesn't just uh, disappear tonight or tomorrow. And, and I believe there's concern that if he had faced U.S. justice or justice there or here, that more names might come out linked to this corruption in Mozambique. So that is considered important in this timing as well. He's the key man. He knows where he knows the bank accounts. He knows where the money ended up, and so he is the key to possibly recovering some of that stolen money for for the benefit of a country uh, where where it is badly needed. Mm. Professor Andre Thomas Hausen, thank you very much. Now, mental health is big business in South Africa. The number of disorders is climbing and more people are claiming more from medical aids. Are we doing enough to tackle this at ground level? That story coming up at first. Time for Sports News.